Hello there, faithful listener. You've tuned in to Season 7 of the Bible Explained Podcast. So make sure to grab your cup of coffee, because today we are going to be discussing the book of First Samuel. Hey guys, welcome to the Bible Explained Podcast. Today is Friday, and I hope you guys have all had a really fantastic week. Let me know how your week went contact me. You'll find my information in the description of this podcast episode. I love to hear from you guys. And while you're contacting me about how your week went, also let me know what is your spiritual gift? I'll be very interested in hearing about that. And if you don't know your spiritual gift, well then go take one of those online tests and then tell me what your spiritual gift is. (laughs) I'd really like to hear about your guys' gifts. So let's read 1 Samuel chapter 2 today, verses 22 through 36. We're going to be finishing up this chapter by talking about Eli's terrible, terrible sons. Okay, so I'm going to be reading this at the W.E.B. this morning, but please feel free to read the version of the Bible that you prefer. And also grab your cup of coffee or your cup of tea this morning. And let's enjoy reading God's word together. Once again, this is 1 Samuel 2, 22 to the end of the chapter. Now, Eli was very old. And he heard all that his sons did to all of Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the door of the tent of meeting. He said to them, why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all of these people. No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You make Yahweh's people disobey. If one man sins against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against Yahweh, who will intercede for him? Notwithstanding, they didn't listen to the voice of their father because Yahweh intended to kill them. The child Samuel grew on and increased in favor, both with Yahweh and also with men. A man of God came to Eli and said to him, Yahweh says, did I reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt in bondage to Pharaoh's house? Didn't I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? Didn't I give to the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Why do you kick at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honor your sons above me to make yourselves fat with the best of all of the offerings of Israel, my people? Therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now Yahweh says, far be it from me, for those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me will be cursed. Behold, The days come that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house, that there will not be an old man in your house. You will see the affliction of my habitation in all the wealth which I gave Israel. There shall not be an old man in your house forever. The man of yours, whom I don't cut off from my altar, will consume your eyes and grieve your heart. All the increase of your house will die in the flower of their age. This will be a sign to you that will come on your two sons, on Hophni and on Phinehas. In one day, they will both die. I will raise up a faithful priest for myself, who will do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house. He will walk before my anointed forever. It will happen that everyone who is left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a loaf of bread and will say, please put me into one of the priest's offices that I may eat a morsel of bread. This is another example of God hardening people's hearts. And I think a lot of people get really mad at that statement. Like, how dare God harden a heart specifically so that God can go kill that person for having a hard heart. So I'm going to recap on that. It says in scripture that God does not want any single person on the planet at any point in time to die a spiritual death. That is very clear throughout all of scripture. So then you might be asking me, well, isn't this a contradiction? Then, because it says that God hardens hearts, or in the case of what we're talking about today, it says that Hophni or Hophni and Phinehas did not listen to their father because God intended to kill them. So is this a contradiction? Because why would God harden Hophni and Phinehas's hearts? And no, it's not a contradiction at all, because God does not want a single person to perish in their sins. And he has given every single person a chance to not perish in their sins. Throughout all of history, he has given every single person that chance. 
And yet people don't want that chance sometimes. And you can see here that Hophni and Phinehas, they got warned by their father in verses 22 through 25, and yet they still refused to listen to their father. And you might be like, well, that's because God hardened their hearts. But why would God, if Hophni and Phinehas truly wanted to listen to their father, like, let's just say that, why would God be like, nah, you know, I'm, I'm not going to let you guys listen to your father. I'm going to make sure that you guys don't listen to the truth. That, that contradicts everything about God's nature. Hophni and Phinehas and every other person in scripture that we see, the words, God hardened their hearts. Every single one of them didn't care about Yahweh, didn't want Yahweh, had multiple chances to change their ways, had multiple people coming up to them being like, stop doing what you're doing. And yet they still didn't listen at any point in time. And that's because they didn't want it. So the way I interpret God hardening people's hearts, God is always pulling us toward him. He is always trying to help us. He is always trying to, to grow near to us. But at a certain point, I think God stops trying to pull people toward him. If they just keep rejecting him over and over and over again, I think that's when God hardens people's hearts or stops pulling them toward him and just lets them do whatever they want to do. And this is kind of stated in Romans chapter one, which was written by Paul. And Paul was talking about how people think that they are very smart and very wise and believe that they can do whatever they want to do. And God eventually gives them over to that mindset. God eventually, in my mind, stops pulling them towards him. And he gives them over to what they already want to do. And then they do all sorts of terrible and evil things. Well, anyway, Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were terrible people. As we talked about in the last episode on Wednesday, I mentioned how Hophni and Phinehas would cause violence in the temple by taking this like three pronged fork and dipping it into the boiling pot of meat when these people would bring sacrifices to Yahweh. So not only were Hophni and Phinehas kind of stealing in a sense from the people who are bringing these offerings, they were stealing from God because the people were trying to give these offerings to Yahweh. I mean, I can imagine how people would react nowadays, right? If the same amount of greed was happening in the church, even though we don't give offerings of meat to God anymore, we give offerings of money. So can you imagine if, if there were some corrupt people in the church, just like forcing you to give them money, you know, while you're trying to present your offering to God? It's like the same thing. No, I don't want to give my offering to those corrupt people. I want to give my offering to God. So Hophni and Phinehas, by doing this, were causing people to not want to come to the temple and offer sacrifices. And yet Eli, who not only was the judge of Israel this time, but he was also the priest, like the high priest. He wasn't doing anything about it. He was just like, OK, whatever. They're my sons. And I don't know, whatever. He wasn't doing anything to stop this. And I'm sure he heard reports of it. He was the high priest after all. And yet he allowed this to continue on. So now Eli finds out. It says he heard that he heard everything his sons did to all of Israel and how they were sleeping with the women who served at the door of the tent of meeting. So not only were they being corrupt and being greedy and taking people's offerings and despising God's temple and tra trampling all over God's offerings. Now they're sleeping with the women who served at the temple. And depending on how this is translated, it could either be the women who served at the temple, because we do know based on history and on the Old Testament, there were women who would serve at the temple doing various tasks. And women could actually offer themselves up for service at the temple, kind of like how little Samuel was given for service for his entire life. Women could do the same thing. So like I said, depending on how this is translated, it could mean either women who served at the temple or it could mean women who came to the temple, like assembled at the temple 
just to worship at the temple, like everyday women who were just coming to worship. Hophni and Phineas were seducing the women who would come to the temple, whether they were servants or just women, like ordinary women coming to the temple to worship. Hophni and Phineas would go up to them. They would seduce them. Maybe, maybe they were doing more than that. I don't know what Hophni and Phineas were doing, but they were doing some bad things. Okay. And God was extremely clear about sexual immorality in his temple. Get rid of it because the temple is God's home. Like, imagine if somebody came into your home and just started destroying it or brought their boyfriend or girlfriend in to, like, sleep with each other on your couch. Like, how would you feel? Because I can tell you how I would feel if that happened in my home and it wouldn't be pretty. I'll just tell you that. So why is it that, you know, we we're supposed to respect other people's homes And yet God's home apparently is deserving of zero respect. So Hophni and Phinehas are just totally destroying God's home with doing whatever they want to do. And now including sexual immorality, which we know that they were married or at least one of them was married because one of their wives is actually mentioned in an upcoming chapter. So we know they were married or at least one of them was married. And yet they're both sleeping with other women. So they're not only having sexual immorality, but they're also cheating on their wives and doing adultery and every other terrible thing that God hates. So Eli goes up to his two sons, Eli being the high priest and his sons being the priests. Eli goes up to him and he's like, why do you do these things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all of these people. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear. You make Yahweh's people disobey. I just don't understand. This must have been going on for years. And we know that even after this chapter is done, and even after the prophecy God gives Eli, we know that also many more years actually went by. And Hophni and Phinehas are still serving in this role of priest, and Eli never did anything, like at any point in time, to correct this. And you might be like, well, yeah, he's correcting it right here, you know, in verses 22 through 25. But is he? Is he or is he just like complaining to his sons? What he should have done was kicked them out of the temple and followed the Old Testament rules and also taught his sons beforehand how to be good priests. But yet Eli didn't do any of this. He says, this is a bad report I hear. If one man sins against against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against Yahweh, who will intercede for him? So, I mean, it's good advice in a way that Eli is giving his sons because he's right. I mean, they're towing a really bad line here. And as we can see at this point in time, God is already getting very close to judging these two sons. And that's the thing about God. You know, he... Whenever you see God getting ready to judge somebody, it's not always immediate. You know, sometimes it takes like many more years before God actually judges the person. And that's because of God's amazing mercy and God's amazing grace. And even God was gracious here to Hophni and Phinehas and I think even to Eli. And maybe God was specifically waiting to punish Hophni and Phinehas because of Eli's sake. You know, because Eli, it does seem like at least as for him himself, he tried to follow Yahweh with his own life, but unfortunately he didn't teach the same things to his son. And so in verse 25, notwithstanding, the sons didn't listen to Eli, the voice of their father, because Yahweh intended to kill them. But the child Samuel grew on and increased in favor, both with Yahweh and also with men. So Samuel is getting a little bit older, a few years are going by, and he's increasing in favor with Yahweh and also with men. So in verse 27, sometime later, it says, a man of God came to Eli and said to him, and we don't know who this man of God was. It's never stated who this guy is. So it's an unnamed individual in scripture who has a big, big message to Eli, the high priest and also the judge of Israel. So he comes to Eli and he says, Yahweh says, I did so much For my people Israel from the very beginning, I got them out of Egypt. I got them out of bondage. I took care of them. 
I accepted their offerings. I revealed myself to them and I told them and I told the Levites that they should respect me always. Specifically talking to the Levites, by the way, because Eli was a Levite. The Levites were the ones who were supposed to be the priests of the temple. And so God said, you know, I told the Levites, the priests of my temple, to take care of my temple, to honor the offerings that were coming in, to care for the people, to give the people the the message of the law, and to just spiritually lead my people. So why aren't you spiritually leading my people is basically what God says. He says, why are you honoring your sons above me to make yourselves fat with the best of all of the offerings of Israel, my people? So God is saying like, look, I accepted the offerings of Israel long ago and I want to accept them now. And yet your sons are destroying it. And he even tells Eli that in a way, Eli is also destroying the offerings because he's allowing his sons to continue doing these things and giving more honor to his own sons than he is to God. And so God says, Eli, you're part of all of this. You're part of this. You have not corrected your sons the way you should. And you know, it's, it's very sad because in scripture, it says that the parent who loves the child actually disciplines him with the rod. Meaning that if a parent loves their child, they are going to discipline them. They are going to make sure that their child grows up to be a well-respected individual because someday that child is going to grow up. And if that child grows up to be a terrible bully adult, no one is going to like that child. So in a way, even though it seems harsh to spank a child because they're just a child, God actually says that that is how parents show love to their child by disciplining their children. Because Eli apparently did not do that. He never disciplined his children. And so now God says that Eli is even a part of all of this, even though Eli never himself came and destroyed God's offerings. He still didn't do what he was supposed to do as a father and also as a high priest. So then to conclude in verses 31 through 36, God says, the days are going to come where I cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house, meaning not Eli's physical arm, but his strength, the Levitical priestly line. God says he's going to cut that off completely. And he says, Eli, you're going to experience all these terrible things. There's not going to be an old man in your house forever. In other words, Eli's line is going to get cut short. So there's not going to be any descendants really of Eli. And that's what God says. He says, this is going to be a sign to you that will come on your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. In one day, they will both die. And God's not saying that tomorrow they're going to die, but that Hophni and Phinehas were both going to die on the same day together. And that would be a sign to Eli that now everything that God is saying is going to happen. So he says, after this, I'm going to raise up a faithful priest for myself who will do according to that, which is in my heart and in my mind, and I will build him a sure house. He will walk before my anointed forever. I find that beautiful. Man, I never noticed that before because the anointed is Jesus. It will happen that everyone who's left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a loaf of bread and will say, please put me into one of the priest's office that I may eat a morsel of bread. So to me, that kind of sounds like God is talking about Jesus here because that is what happens. It, it says in scripture that one day every single knee will bow to Jesus. So everyone's going to bow down to him. So it's, it's kind of cool. This is definitely a prophecy of Jesus. Even if God is talking about Samuel here, it can, it can absolutely also be referring to the prophecy of, of Jesus. But either way, what this all means is that Eli's line was going to get cut short. In other words, the Levitical priests 
were not going to be the priests any longer because God was going to raise up little Samuel to become the next high priest. And because of Eli's sin of allowing his sons to destroy God's temple for so long, because of that sin, this was all going to happen. And, you know, I'm not a parent and I'd like to be someday, but I'm not a parent. But I do know what scripture says about parenting. And I I don't like to talk about parenting too often because I don't really know what it's like. But I do know what scripture says. Scripture says that you discipline your child. And I'm very thankful that my parents disciplined me. You guys have met my mom before. She's been on the podcast. And uh, oh yeah, she disciplined me. (laughs) And I... You know, at the time, I didn't like it. You know, I was a little kid and I was like, you're mean and you're unfair and you're this and you're that. But now I'm so happy. I'm so thankful that I had a mom and also a dad who really tried to put me on the right path. And that included, you know, all sorts of different kind of uh, methods they used to discipline me. But it was good. It was a good thing my parents did for me. And uh, I'm very, very grateful for that. So my encouragement is it's not bad to discipline your kids. It's not bad. Obviously, it is bad to abuse your child. That is wrong and also against scripture, by the way. But when it comes to disciplining a child, it is a necessary and important thing to do. And unfortunately here, God had to come to Eli specifically, which he didn't come to Hophni and Phinehas, by the way, in this message. He came to Eli and he said, you did not do what you were supposed to do. You did not raise your sons the way you should have raised them. Alrighty, faithful listeners. I uh, will see you all on Monday. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Don't forget to contact me about what your spiritual gift is because I've been interested in that recently. And also just check out all of the links in the description. Once again, I'm going to be doing a YouTube episode very quickly about a man that I know who went through a terrible, terrible motorcycle accident and he almost died. But his, his message and his testimony is extremely encouraging. So that YouTube video will be up very soon. So make sure to go over to YouTube and subscribe so that you don't miss that particular video. Anyway, guys, I will see you all in the next episode on Monday. Happy listening and God bless.